Wait. What man? Look at that bloody Beanie Seagull. One of Red Man's costumes <laughs> in Def Def Jam fight for New York, you know? Always <laughs> 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 got his hat down to the side like some PYG. Oh don't say that. <laughs> it's because of the black in it. No, it's the way you heard it, that's why. <laughs> it looks like that, that's whatever. <laughs> man said PYG, you know. The website, bro. Oh, the website on that side. What's that? What's that? Just have the, look, have, the, have the logo up. The logo looks well. Anyway, I'll find the logo. Don't worry about it. We are live. So we're live now? Yeah, we're live right now, mate. We're going to come in the chat room. Hello, hi. I don't know why the feedback is so slow. I never heard anything. No, they they move it at the camera. Just to do with the internet connection, probably. Those brother. Mm. That net neutrality boy. In showroom, well, here we go. The one viewer. That's what you have. This works. Who's the viewer? I won't say. When you try to look. Oh no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Subscribers on. It's nice. Uh, sure. Starting shortly, guys. Yeah, so give it some time, a few more people to get in the chat room, and then we will shoot soon. Uh, sorry, surely start our um, webinar. About a few minutes. We just. Oh, no. Yeah, that's I just wanted to know those comments was called from the YouTube comment section. Should do. Now it comes up with a little chat room. Yeah, I need a chat room. Two viewers now? No viewers. Now one of them was me. Oh. Chat. Is that you waiting for us? Probably so. No, it might be someone else now. That's me. So. I'm just going to start. Yeah. Um, oh. Uh, where are you go. Yes. Uh, no. Boys. Hi, guys. Um, as you know already, you may not know. My name is Jesse, founder and operations director of New Motor Royal Creativity. You have yourself Solomon Gamera over here, branding and director and marketing director of New Motor Royal Creativity, and Wayne, creative director of New Motor Royal Creativity as well. And today we're going to bring to you our webinar, which is New Year, New Owner. And what that basically is, is 
we're trying to make sure that people understand the concept of entrepreneurship and what you and doing what you love and um, i understand the both of the two and we're going to give you some some very very great tools and value on how to actually take that into 2018 by starting now um, whether it be baking cakes you want to do cars or you know you just love blogging wherever it is we're here to help you ignite that brand but also take it into 2018 with values and help from all rounds of, of you know entrepreneurship and whatnot it's not hard it can be done so stay tuned hope you enjoy this webinar like i said before in my previous post we will be doing a live q a at the end uh, we'll have the information up as well to let you guys know where to follow us on um so yeah any questions any queries save them for the live q a after and we are to help you there we also have a special guest on our live q a as well um that will be here to kind of assist in the actual i would say walk in to the 2018 or walking into the new year of you being an owner or an entrepreneur so yeah without further ado i'm going to start so i'm going to share my screen with you guys right now hopefully you guys can see it um do go my eyes if i'm looking at the screen at times because i'll be reading from it um and yeah like i said get a pen and pad because although it is a short webinar we have got a lot of value here so i'm going to start by letting you guys know today roughly how we're going to talk about things and what we're going to talk about as well so for example um so here we have our contents page um we're going to talk about why you should start now why it's important to start now um how to illuminate your vision and brand follow on with that process so the process that leads after you've obviously got your vision your understanding of why you're going to do it and how to stay consistent so myself will start so we'll interject with the process and then Wayne will leave and end with the um, staying consistent part at the end. Then we have our Q&A, like I said before, on our live platforms, which is our Instagram and Facebook. So at New Motive, WRC. Right. For those of you who don't know us, um, like I said before, myself, Jesse, so and Wayne, we run New Motive World of Creativity. We have been for about the past two years. And... Um, Really, how we got started was um, a bit more in depth uh, in our in our previous webinars. But we had an idea. Uh, we followed through from university. It was hard. It was difficult. We did work. We still, you know, do other external commissions and stuff outside of the motive as well. But working together was the main thing. And me, alongside with Wayne, who also ran a company called All Nights Limited, we shared the same vision. And then we create a new model of world of creativity where we can deliver our brands, our values, our understanding, and our help to help you guys obviously ignite your brands in the future. So uh, that's our university is where we studied at as well, Hertfordshire University. I don't, think, I don't think they can see the slides. Oh, I've checked on it. So just gonna have to elaborate a bit more. Oh, see, so you can't see the slides. Yeah, I was checking just now. I don't know. We can still carry on with it. Right. Okay. Let me see if I can fix that problem here. One second while we carry on. Yeah, your screen share. Yeah. One. Perfect. Right. So, let me just check if they can see that. All right. Got people, couple viewers. Um, if you can see the slides, let us know. But otherwise, we'll just carry on pushing. All right. But uh, hold on a second. Should be coming up shortly. I will just carry on for now. Yeah. Hold on. Just give, do give me a shout, guys. Um, one of us will try and get through to any problems and questions and queries you have. But hopefully, you can see the slides. If not, this will be recorded and we will upload it onto YouTube um, straight after the webinar as well. If you do miss any parts, so yeah. As I was saying, so yeah, this is who we are, what university you studied at, and our roles and titles. Now. Why now? 2017 is literally ending in about a few days' time. And you're probably asking yourself, okay, cool, what did I do in 2017 that was good? So you're probably going through the Snapchat memories, the Instagram stories, or the Facebook photos, and you're realizing maybe, you know what, I could probably do 2018 better. No one ever really looks back. I mean, unless, 
you're really that much of an arrogant person, but nobody really looks back under the year and say, yeah, that, this year was fine. I don't need to do anything for 2018. <laughs> you know, you always want to do better. These guys, um, switch to the next screen because I think it's shown on this one. Exit out. Nice. Oh. Right, okay. Just make sure you guys can see it properly, yeah? No, no, just go to screen share. Mm -hmm. screen share. Yeah. Yeah. Is that to everyone? Everyone. But go to the go to screenshot again. Yeah. Uh, on the left where you pressed before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Press again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to large screen on that one. Yeah. Can you do that as a presentation on that screen instead? Uh, all in one sec. You can try. Sorry guys, I'll do Go for What's that? Oh. Don't worry, just leave it as it was now. Alright, okay, cool. Alright, let me see. Should work now. Yeah, I think just leave it as. Right, so I'm just going to continue on with the slides. Um, please let me know if there's any other problems. But yeah, like I said, while we start now, why should you start now in 2017? Yeah, just leave it as it was over there. Yeah, sorry guys. It'll about be fine this. if you just leave it there, trust me. Yeah. Having some problems with our slides. Um, I do apologize. But anyway, so why now? Out of approximately 7 billion people worldwide, 400 million are entrepreneurs, which means 1 in 18 people have their own business. So if you want to put it in perspective, let's look at your workplace or let's look at your street or your estate or your road. At least one of those people are entrepreneurs or at least one of them are doing what they love. So it's more it's not more or less kind of okay, they're entrepreneurs because they have their own shop or whatever it is. They're actually doing what they love. And what this means to you guys, it is achievable. So it's not that okay, there's seven billion people in the world and you're only four hundred of them. No. This is a growing figure, by the way. This is only the figure that came up in 2016. 2017 hasn't been done just yet. But from what I've heard and obviously from what I've seen, it has um, tripled, I think. Another powerful tool that is literally opening not only gateways to other people's lives, but you know, letting people live their actual dreams online is the internet, and it's opened so much doors for you to become successful. You know, we're going to talk about that in the next slide as well, and I'm going to highlight some very, very um, powerful uh, YouTubers that are out right now. You probably may know some of them, but we're going to go through their stuff and what they do. But um, with the internet, I mean, look at what we're doing here right now, you know. I'm having an online event now normally i have to pay for a venue you know hire out obviously um, whatever electronics to get these this slideshow and that started out as well if i haven't got projects myself gather people sell tickets which we still do anyway but at the same time we can give you more knowledge and more value by doing webinars online through the internet you know it's opened up the whole different you know a whole different element of connecting with people Next thing is, let's keep it real. You know, it's 2017. Um, we're not going to lie no more. I'm not a, a, a liar. I'm an honest person. Are you happy in your current situation or job? A lot of people tend to be. Yep. I've got 55K a month. I'm sorry, a year. I'm such and such director of this, you know, company. I'm happy with my job. Really? Why do you force yourself to wake up in the morning? Why is an alarm set? Why are you up? and happy and ready to go work, you know, excited, thrilled. Why do you take the coffee in the morning to force yourself to wake up? You know, think about when you're going on holiday. You can't sleep. As much as you should get sleep, you can't sleep. You're, you know, you're up packing, you're excited. 
you can't wait to get on the plane, you're snapping, you're Instagramming. Do you see where I'm coming from? Because you want to do that and you're excited about what to expect from your new experience. It's the same thing with a job. Are you really happy? Another thing that I've learned over the past five years, which I'm actually proud to say, I've seen a lot of people from my university doing the same thing as well, is you've started, the people have started to put their degree to work and use on their own terms. So for example, with us, you know, we studied at the University of Hertfordshire, Wayne was at Met, Metropolitan University, and basically from the animation courses that we did and multimedia design courses that we did, we created new model of world of creativity because we realized that going to university was only breeding us to work in our actual, um, you know, um, course uh, structure. So, for example, like, instead of becoming an animator of my own business, I'll become an animator for another company and be earning the same wage, maybe even lower, worse hours, whereas at university, I just did it for free because I loved doing it. So why not do it and get paid? You see where I'm coming from? So that's the why now section. And I really want you guys to, you know, Take note of these bullet points because this webinar I've made it really simple, but I've also tried to add a lot more value in terms of like morals because I really want you guys to understand how you've got the power within yourself to actually do it and start now. So let's get to it. I said to you guys I want to talk about the YouTuber stars. Um, you probably recognize some of these faces here already. Um, these are the top five at the moment in the world. So not in the UK, not in the USA or Europe, in the world. And I'm going to break them down to you, starting from number five, moving up to number one. So you have Rosanna Hansiano, if I'm pronouncing it right. And she's on six million per year. Um, she had the nerdiest baking channel on YouTube and is also the most popular of any baking channel on the platform, period. So this ain't just YouTube or you know Sky or any baking channel you're seeing on TV. She has the most popular following, period. So think about Jamie Oliver, think about Ainsley. I don't know the exact statistics, but this is what they're basically saying. Um, Pensino's uh, Nerdy Nami's channel puts a spin on normal recipes, including videos for food creations such as pie pies, pops, and princess peach cobbler. So what she's done, her hobby of actually baking in her own kitchen, she's gone on YouTube, she says, you know what, I actually like baking, but I'm a nerd. <laughs> So it's cool to be a nerd now in this day and age. I'm one of the face. It's the face, and obviously you can see the cake as well. I mean, for a cake, that does look nerdy, but that looks look really, really good. Like, I want to eat that cake just because of the way it looks. Colours as well. The colours as well. You know, she's really thought about how to implement her personality in what she loves doing. And now look, six million a year, guys. Like, when you think about it realistically, you get paid. You, I know bare people that cook for free, that bake these cakes for free. Some, some people at the same sort of level, or even worse, so even better, sorry. You could be a chef working for a professional company, um, or a baker, I would say, sorry, not a chef. Chef's a different type of job role, but a baker, and you're baking those sort of cakes. But then at the same time, you're only getting paid your normal monthly wage, which is maybe 500 to 1,700 pounds, two grand, wherever it is. She's earning six mil. Just off YouTube. That's not including our advertisements, our sponsors. Yeah. Let's move on to the next. Smoosh. Now, I think these guys are more kind of like the pranky sort of parry sort of guys um, that you see on YouTube. Now, um, they're, they're old school veterans. Um, Ian, Hex, Ian Hecox and Anthony Padilla. Or Padilla. Um, Smoosh was one of the first YouTube sensations and becoming well known for their duo slapstick comedies. Um, comedy videos that parody videos games and pop culture so for example um games that may recently come out like you know call of duty or stuff to do with like pop culture like it could be jesse j's new track or katie Perry's new track they will do sort of parody videos to that so like you know amateur or fan ones um they've shown no signs of slowing down and they now run seven channels so collectively the two of them earn seven mil a year i'm sure you've got a friend out here that you do a lot of foolishness with <laughs> at times at your, you know, auntie's birthday parties or your cousin's gatherings or granddad's barbecues on a Sunday. And literally, imagine you put that on YouTube now and you got, you know, seven mil a year. I'm just saying. Nah, I didn't. 
The next one, uh, which is one of our favourites as well, uh, Lily Singh, uh, she is quite funny. Um, she's on 7.5 mil a year. And basically, she does everything from comedy sketches to music videos of her one-woman YouTube channel. Um, Sings also has a YouTube channel star named Superwoman and a rapid, rapid fan base. She went on a worldwide trip to Island Unicorn Tour last year and released a feature film of the same name on YouTube Red, the company's premium service. So because of her great success, YouTube has now endorsed her to do films. YouTube partner. YouTube partner. So, for example, um, you may get to a certain level with, um, I don't know, let's just say, um, if, you work, if you work for Amazon or Virgin, yeah? And because of your skill set, you become so high, they end up putting you on as a partner because they believe you can add more value to the company as a partner than as a worker or an employee. Now, what she's done, I remember she does a lot of, she started doing, like, comedy sketches of like Indian fact because obviously she's Canadian but she's you know native Indian uh, not native American Indian but native Indian in terms of the content of the country itself and she's obviously taken that culture on and did comedy sketches of her parents her father her uncle mother and grandma from that it led to you know music videos of uh, like stars and that as well she also does like a cab service where she will drive like her car with like I know she had Kevin Hart on one of her videos The Rock as well um I can't, I can't remember the rest of them, but basically, she's taken her whole entire personality just on YouTube, and you know it's it's blown up into a whole new level. And seven point five mil, just for basically not acting a fool, but doing what you love. Like I said before, are you happy in your current situation? Because these people here, I mean, they're not showing any sort of skill sets when it comes to an uh, uh, academic level. They're not showing any skill sets of fear. All they're doing is actually just putting out what they really love on YouTube. I mean, some of them started out with one subscriber, two subscribers, three subscribers, literally, and it's grown from them. 7.5 mil. I'll be super. I'll call me super. I'll call me super man. Call me anyone you want to call me, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I will do that. Definitely. Next. So we have this number two, uh, Roman Atwood. At a wicked uh, eight mil per year, um, and he's basically one of those pranked field guys. Like he's a proper like, imagine Jackass mixed with Ashton Kutcher's. Uh, what was it again? The um, MTV thing you said, Ashton Kutcher. I actually can't remember. Um, you've been pranked or something like that, or you've been, pranked. you've been pranked. Yeah, imagine mixing those two together. This is your guy here. So um, his YouTube channel also seems more in line with the humor you typically see from. Stars on Vine's Twitter video and platform, which, you know, which is shutting down. Atwood has been dubbed YouTube's most appalling prankster. He's, he, this guy, this, this, is the, this is how deep it is, yeah? He's actually pretended to kill his own toddler multiple times to film his girlfriend's reactions. And he's also <sighs> filmed... That's... I know, I know, it's crazy. He's also filmed many less horrifying um, prank videos for his channel as well. You know, you've just got that person that has no filter, but they don't know when to stop. That's a strong woman. Didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, his girlfriend, yeah, definitely is a strong. I mean, well, it's paying him eight mil, so she's probably like, oh, all right, okay, cool. I don't really mind that. I'm going to knock you out, but at the same time, we're getting eight mil, so that's fine. <laughs> you know, as long as I've got two mil out of that, I'm cool with that. That's where coming from. So, but literally, you know, go on the extra mile. Like, you see the whole daring sort of thing he's done now? He's pretending to kill his own toddler. Now, a lot of people disagree with that on you know, TV yeah. or whatever, but he doesn't care because this is what he loves doing. And imagine a comment section, right? I know, I know. Imagine his girlfriend's <laughs> reaction. But because of... He knows you will be more willing to see his girlfriend reaction than actually see the prank itself. Now, if that was successful, which it has been, to get that on tape, look at how it's painted. I mean, come on now, these guys are clowning. Don't get me wrong, I'm not dissing their hard work effort. There's a lot of hard work behind the scenes because I know when the money goes up higher, you get a team, you get sponsors, you get so much different other people behind you as well. And um, even before then, before you had no one there, it was literally yourself just putting out this content, consistent content. We do a lot of that ourselves, videos especially. Yep. You know, so I get it. But at the same time, just look very, very closely and think about it. Pranks, eight mil a year. You know, it's not that hard when you put it in perspective. Now, 
Last but not least is is a I think his name is um, PewDiePie. PewDiePie, yeah, I know about this guy. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah, we know about this guy. <laughs> he's he's on a whipping fifteen mil a year. Like he's the highest YouTube paid person in the world. In the world, guys. Like, can you imagine YouTube? I was there when YouTube started, like as a platform, and then you didn't even know how to circulate on it and how to go around it. And now look, it's making people millionaires. Fifteen million a year. Felix Arvid is obviously Felix Arvid of Cal, uh, Jelberg or Kilgerberg is his own, um, you know, uh, or is a farmer. We struggle with names like this. We're just going to keep it real. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> but um, you can read it better. Let's just call him Felix. Well, Felix, Felix anyway. Man. But yeah, anyway, um, he's a farmer, Swedish video gamer. Comment, commentator as well who has dominated YouTube over the past few years. Um, Felix videos show him playing various video games while in the box in the top of the corner of the screen shows his reaction um, to what's happened at the video game. Many attribute his success to the attention he pays to his fans. Um, Kilberg spends a lot, spends lots of time talking about them, answering their questions in YouTube comments, section form and so on and so forth. And obviously forming a community of bros. So basically what it is um, besides him doing his reactions, obviously, his video games as well, he's actually spent so much time on these actual fans. So, I know if this is the same guy, I'll correct, he actually took some of his fans out to eat or flew them out to Dubai or something like that. He does all these crazy things where he actually pays attention to his fan base so much that he really loves them, really interacts with them. And you know what you get that much from a lot of millionaires? Because more times when you make the money, they kind of just... You know, use other systems to get in contact with you. But this guy still loves his fans up until now. I know there was a rumor going around a year ago where he was like, you know what? I've got over 55 million subscribers. I'm going to delete my YouTube channel and start again because it's just too much. 50 mil a year, the highest paid YouTuber in the world, just from playing video games at home and, you know, Shay's reactions. Like, I mean, yeah. I've, I've, if you see me play a video game, you'd be like, this guy really directed me more with more creativity. I go, I'm a different person. But he's made money off it. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I get it. It does look, it does seem like I'm just saying it because it seems easy and whatnot. Yeah, there will be struggles. There will be tests and that behind it. But if you do what you love, it will never be seen as work. It wouldn't be seen as, oh, you know what? Like, this is long. I can't be asked. I'm tired now and whatnot. You would do it to the highest of your degree because you're doing it anyway. This is what you love doing in your spare time. You see where I'm coming from. So think about your hobbies. You know, we're going to move into illuminating your vision in a minute, but just think about your hobbies. Think about what you love doing. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't. Seriously, like, who would have told these guys 10 years ago that you're going to make 15 mil just from recording yourself doing video games? They would have laughed. You would have laughed. I would have laughed at him. It's like, what are you talking about? Come on, bro. It's not going to work. But look at what he's doing 15 mil a year. Think about it. Do a lot of thinking before this 2018, you know? Now, illuminate your vision um, section I'm going to now go into um, because as I've now shown you guys why you need to start now and obviously those that have started already from a long time ago and they obviously reap the benefits from it, I want to show you guys how to make that vision real, how to actually create that. And um, I've, I've used this powerful image here, this cosmic artwork. I can't remember the artist's name, but he's very big online as well. And um, it's a gift. Because I want, I want you guys to, what a GIF is basically, is the image that shows a bit of animation, but it's still at the same time. So um, the reason why I picked this image is because I want you guys to really picture yourself as this person here. So this is you day in, day out, regardless if you're thinking about it or not. This is your brain, connected with your heart and with your thoughts. You can illuminate your vision. It's not hard. Seriously. I want to show you the, the basic simple steps. I could go into detail in terms of like the math of it, the science of it. That's all long. I'm here to keep it real and I'm here to add value, like I said before, because we, I really want to be working with you guys in 2018. I really want to be helping you guys do what you love in 2018, from igniting your brand, you know, expanding your business, illuminating your visions and so on and so forth. So as you've got all the numbers and all the symbols coming out of his head with his heart, that's you in your day to day, connected. Focused, let's stay on task and let's move on. So, 
first things first brainstorm your idea names or title of your business or businesses or brand or whatever it is a lot of people find themselves in circles and it makes it so much more difficult in business as well when you actually are thinking about what you want to do but you don't put nothing down on paper i mean it's all good thinking about it i could have a conversation with these three here about a brand new business that we can you know create within like an hour but if nothing's on paper, then it's never going to be a plan. You yeah. said that in one of our webinars. It just ends up becoming an incoherent thought that you can't articulate very well. Exactly. And what you want to do, you want to make sure that by putting it on paper, you want to see if it works. So, for example, a whiteboard, it could be an A3 sheet, a piece of paper. You know, clear your dining table if you've got to clear it. Get a pencil, circle, brainstorm in the middle. And avoid doing this on your phone as well actually do it like with something that you can see away yeah. from your phone because there's too many distractions too many distractions as well and they also always say with pen and paper you will never you always remember so literally write brainstorm in the middle and then just say for example you, you want to do um like for example there's a guy that i'm I, I, one of my close friends that he really loves cars like he really proper loves cars like and i always say to him bro you should do something with cars like a car check or you know, go to some of these racing tracks, these guys that have customized their, you know, their everyday Fiat Punto or their Peugeot, you know, find a way where you can kind of break into that. Because a lot of people do know about cars, but they don't know about cars. They know about the cars that the guys that, you know, are on our level that really invest their money and time into it. So film them. So let's use him as an example for this so you guys get a clearer picture. Brainstorm, car check. Okay, cool car check that sounds a bit too plain let me call it my cars or check my car out or check my style my rims whatever check Brains my ride them. check my ride you've got <laughs> pimp my ride obviously from no, no 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 you know what that sounds too much like pimp my ride yeah. check my whip check my whip if you're from the uk and you use whip as a slang word then yeah you know ones that you can kind of you know vibe with that for all those guys that are international that are listening that don't understand what whip means you I mean, probably would but you may not but um skirt skirt but yeah <laughs> <laughs> Brainstorm your ideas is really, really important. Cement your idea, which is another task that people fail to do. So they'll be brainstorming and there'll be like a hundred pages inside their front room. And I get it, it's cool, but I would say brainstorm with someone that's out of the business or out of the box in your team. So for example, when we brainstormed, it was me, for new motive, it was me, Sol, and like eight other guys before Wayne got involved. And um, anyway, that took a lot of brainstorming because there's eight, eight different people's opinions, eight different people's actual, you know, understandings, um, you know, uh, comments, you know, like, oh, it's not going to work. I don't think that's going to work. No, I'll do it this way. People are not going to understand that, this and that. We need someone to say, no, picking these three, let's brainstorm again. Right, we're picking these two. This is what we've got left. Cement your idea. Design your brand identity. Following of these four, I think four or five steps. Um, the reason you do it and your big why. So basically, for example, why are you doing your brand or business or idea, for example? So if it's my friend again that does, loves the cars, I'm doing it because I love cars. But not only that, I actually want to show people how much the average person that loves cars would invest money and time into it. And how sick it can look. So, for example, imagine there wasn't no Fast and Furious movie, but there was a Fast and Furious documentary, but from a average working person's perspective. You see, I'm coming from. How interesting would that be? You see, guys that are like 18 years old, you know, spending all their pocket money to get this spoiler on the side of their car at the back, sorry, and then they're racing and earning two, three grand, whatever. I mean, whether it's illegal, legal or not, but you know, the whole drive to that, the whole build up. You see I'm coming from like it's good entertainment if you market it right, but find out your big why. Target audience once again, like I said, you know who are you doing it for? So for example, um, this is really important because people get this mixed up with why they're doing it. You have your why, but you need to also have who. When you have your who, your target audience, it's easier for you to get sit down with a marketing strategist and also a mentor as well because they can focus directly on that person. So for example, if it's the car guy again. Um, nine to five people, people that love cars, um, 
people that collect collectibles and that collectible items with cars as well. People that love speed. You see where I'm coming from? Because a motorcyclist that has his bike, or someone that's you know um, keen on the Harley Davidsons, could actually like what he sees in the cars because it's sort of the same sort of thing in the sense of aspects of speed, love, vehicle customization. You see where I'm coming from? So you can market in that kind of way as well, which is very important. Colors. This here is going to be your actual ID to your brand identity. This is how people are going to remember you. When you see a red or a blue with a circle, what's the first thing that comes to your head if you're from the UK or Britain, or even maybe overseas? TFL? Maybe. Sky News? Maybe. Car Giant? Maybe. It all depends on how you've actually seen that brand identity, you know, uh, relate to you. Do you see where I'm coming from? Virgin as well, when you see red. Now it's black and orange. When you see black and orange with a smile, automatically you think it's Amazon. You know, so think about colors. It's really, really important. Keep it down to three. That's our advice. Our, the three of us, our personal advice. Some people say four, five, six, but if you look at most of the brands that are out there, you've got a main color, you've got a highlight, and you've got a color that directs. So, for example, black is our main color. Our highlight is red. So red is what takes you. You see me more if you see the red line start from the M going around, around the V to show you the direction. And white is what obviously illuminates the majority of our logo. So we've picked those three colors to run through our business. At times, we may use shades of gray, but it all depends. Logo, I mean, you ain't got an ID card if you ain't got a face, right? <laughs> Literally, your logo is very, very important. Um, Get that designed. I'm going to keep it really simple without no pun intended. Get it designed by a professional. Okay. You've seen other websites where they do it for like £100, £200, £300, maybe even £50. How much money would you invest in something you love? So, be honest. Be honest, yeah. I mean, I like I like cars. I like Maseratis. And um, for those of you who know about Maserati, it's a very high... Um, spec name brand car um, is very expensive um, we're talking houses here when I buy one I'm going to spend that money on that car because I've seen the value for it and I understand why that car's priced at that, um, at, that, at, that, at that price as well the design the interior the sleekness of it the quality as well so think about your logo like how I'll think about a Maserati or how you think about putting you know certain clothes in your back fair enough you may buy cheap clothes but you still want quality Quality is the main thing. So get a professional to design your logo. All of that, we can do that. But like I said, no. Pun intended. Remember you verbally. Um, every little helps. Tesco's. Um, just do it. Just do it. Nike. Uh, uh, Coca Cola. What was Coca Cola? Um, always Coca Cola. Always Coca Cola. Something like that. McDonald's. I'm loving it. Yeah. Although you shouldn't be, but that's another quick, that's another just topic. Not today, yes. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, these things stay in people's heads. So just try and remember these actual, you know, try and remember your slogan when it's um, coming to designing your logo. It's very yeah. important. It helps as well when it comes to slogans because you never know, you might end up having like um, musicians or someone like that kind of mimicking your slogan in the lyrics and that kind of stuff, and it ends up becoming free promotion for you. It yeah. catches on because I'm pretty sure I've heard like performers saying I'm loving it or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Justin Timberlake did that tune. I'm loving yeah. it. It's whatever it is. Yeah, whether it was for McDonald's or whatnot. I think it was an ad, but he did. But yeah. anyway, so with all that being said, you know, I hope you guys have understood why it's important to start now and the simple steps on how to illuminate your vision. Um, if you do need any help with these sort of things, like I said, we're always here to help after our webinars as well. And we do do our free consultations as well. And there is a lot of stuff going on for 2018 that can add more value to what you're doing right now. I'm going to pass on it to Sol right now at the moment, who's going to obviously go through a view of how you can start the actual process in the actual business of your brand, your vision, and what you love doing. Thank okay. you. You're going to put the camera on yourself just for a brief minute. Oh, they can see me. No, they, they can't me. see you. They can't see you right now. Can well, they can't, can obviously, obviously not. That's just fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, they can just see the slide. Yeah. Ah, but either way, it's fine. Yeah. 
Okay, don't worry, people. Soul's being shy at the moment, so he's going to show you the slides and then continue. I'm always being shy, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, again, big thank you for joining our webinar. Um, hope you enjoyed it so far. Um, I will be taking it from here onwards, and we're going to start the process. So, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> now that you have your business and brand identity sorted, you are fully ready to begin or resume your journey. But I know I picked this picture for a reason because again, it's a movie. Um, oh, it's called again. Well, it was time God I watched it. Um, but it does symbolise. You know, you've got everything ready. You've got your stickers. You've got your backpack. Like you're ready to walk. So those are all the places he's been as well. Yeah, the badges and these. Just to add exactly. a bit of humour, all the badges that he's got there that kind of shows how meticulous he is about branding and logos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you yeah. can tell he brainstormed for quite a while. Yeah. But that's on the side anyway. Just a bit <laughs> of humour I throw in there. <laughs> definitely. Find him within a film of a character. Yeah. yeah this, this is definitely powerful. But yeah, I want to take you through some simple process steps. Um, the first one, I know it may sound a bit cliche or contradictory, but recap on your business plan if you roll one, have a read for it one more time, and place it back on the shelf. Why do I say that? Because your business plan is is a great it start see five years from now or ten years from now or even twenty years, depending on how you did your business plan. But however, when you do hit the field, it becomes very different because the world changes every second. So it's very important that you understand the concept of adapting to change because anything goes. So it's always good to just be up on your business every, every business plan every now and then, but pull on the shelf because you are about to hit the field or the streets, whichever you want to put it. But yeah, that's the first step. Now, the next step you want to do is start really doing small projects or creating products to build a portfolio. The reason why I say this is because, okay, you've got your brand out there, you've got your slogan and everything. You can start speaking to people and whatnot, but if they don't know what you actually do, they want to see proof of the actual stuff. So very important that you have something tangible to show. And also it's just to give yourself more of a challenge to be innovative too. So think about future services that you're going to be providing or extra products or the same example, baking cakes. So um, this is going to be vegan cakes you want to start doing. This is going to be um, not free cakes only or all full dairy, you know. But the bottom line is you need to start getting your portfolio ready. Yeah. Can't stress how important a portfolio is because a portfolio is what helps people keep, take you seriously. Yeah, because once they see the timeline of what you've done over a period of time, they can know that you're committed to it and they know that you're for real. Absolutely. The amount of times that we've met people and they say, oh yeah, well I do this and I do that, but if you go to a website or just where we can see your work, oh, I don't, I don't think I needed that. So, just, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's, it's not a good look. But make sure you have it ready. Um, next thing you're gonna do is make yourself aware online. Um, like we are right now. Yeah, like we are right now. Um, you probably heard it a thousand times, but the internet is well is one of the best things that has happened to human race when it got in regards to business and marketing yourself. Internet is free. Facebook, Instagram, they're just the basic tools for us to get started. Start creating videos, start putting your face on your brand, because again, a lot of people out there are still shy very nervous but like people brand to personality you know i know we covered this in our previous webinar about you know the brand point and several other um content that we've done but start practicing start making short clips of yourself just talking about your passion about what you do like again i like just covered early on that's why you've got some of the biggest um people in the world join youtube all from personality they're just going for the camera so it helps you with confidence too which will follow into the next step start going to networking events meeting people and showing your vision for those that can relate to you so yes you've got the confidence now you know your slogan you know how to um present yourself as well as speak to people so people buy into that they'll buy into people that love their brand love themselves i mean not arrogance per se but just make it so make sure you're on top you know, um, and people will, the right people you want to connect will come to you. Very key. And 
From then onwards, you want to start organizing and delegating roles to outsource. So yeah. what? A, that's just his favorite part. Delegating. Delegating. Yeah, he loves that word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Very cheap. That's where he puts on his best Alan Sugar impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Alan Sugar. My Jesse Aqua Hayford impersonation exactly yeah, he's yeah, almost got the thumb out now turning it upside down yeah okay, okay. Jess. back to soul <laughs> hey Jess. Yeah, i'm yeah. the one who steals the show not you okay all you're trying to do no this is my show <laughs> this is called adding what? humor and humor thank you friend and swag right, <laughs> continue <laughs> anyways yeah. anyways carry on yeah so um cool you made yourself well online now people love your brand people love what you do they see your portfolio they're willing to work with you so now you want to start Thinking about okay, cool. This person does accounting, this person does the marketing, this person does this and that. You want to start delegating roles because all this time you've built a foundation, you've you've done it all by yourself, which is extreme hard work. Now you want to start building your business and giving it to other people. Some may be paid, some may actually love your vision and want to work with you just to um build that partnership with you. So very, very key. And Yes. Final step. Now that everything is working, the operations is great. It takes time to get those steps in order. While that is going on, you want to be innovative. You want to keep coming up with ideas. You want to keep wanting to expand. Because again, the life of an entrepreneur, you don't just sleep, you know, for an entire year and expect a residual income. Because again, there's so many people out there that's wanting to. There's a lot of competition, and. There's, again, the world just keeps moving. It keeps changing. So you want to keep coming up with fresh content. And if you love what you do, this is not an issue, right? That's why I just stressed the earlier one. Find your passion mm -hmm. and find your drive. So, again, staying innovative, which means, okay, now that I've, um, the UK have, I've, I've built, love the cakes that I've built, I'm going to start going international. I'm going to start going to events and start doing guest speaking. Um, let me start doing, um, a lot more complex webinars so invite 500 people so innovation so and i'll bring us to the next stage which is very important for you guys to know because if you're going through a journey there's always going to be dark corners dark shadows or there's going to be some form of downfalls but don't ever see it as a long-term downfall see it as a way to build you up yeah so these are the challenges to expect in the process because again, we've, we're going to be real with you. We're going to be very honest. This is what to expect on your journey, which again, it will help you build up. Number one thing to look out for is your health. Yeah? Physical, if you're spiritual, definitely spiritual, but also the mind. You cannot underestimate, underestimate your mindset. Because again, however you feel or go through during the day will affect your business. Yeah? So when you do meet people, They'll feel of that energy. If you like work with your clients or you've got workers underneath you, they'll follow every single behavior that you're going through because you're the leader. Yeah? Yeah. So it's very important that you train your mind and look for ways to coach yourself how to be um sustainable and just powerful. Again, with the image just shared earlier on, that we all carry electronic beings, you know, the world was per se, but more powerful so yeah. do not underestimate yourself the, the mood shows in your work as well absolutely um people you work with as well so yes again when we're networking with other people going to networking events um speaking to people online yeah it could be clients it could be anyone that you, it could be working under or partnership it may fall out it may be like you know what i don't believe in vision anymore so you let it buy or clients will be like oh, you know what uh, i don't know if i want to spend this money it's it's, it's gonna happen so do not ever ever get discouraged by it, you know, you just move on. Yeah, again, it, it, it's all about the mindset. And also, um, final stage is where, how, and how you invest your money. Quite a touchy subject, just because Christmas just went by. Mm -hmm. See what a lot of you guys. <laughs> where do you spend your money? Um, of course, like, business, I can't feature from exactly how much an average entrepreneur invests into their brand but it is a lot if you believe in quality it takes value mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of effort for you to build up so 
um, you definitely need to prioritize and think about making sacrifices depending on how far you want the business to go and where you go. And it's either finances or skill exchange. Yeah. So 2018 has got to be the year we need to start thinking about, okay, cool. What mistakes did I make in 2017 that I'm not going to drag it to 2018? Is it people that you've been, you know, spending money on? This is just general, not just past finances, but it's the concept. Mm -hmm. So these three important stages, think about them. A good thing to add on to the last thing as well. So um, for anyone watching, you know, there's people that's investing money in Bitcoin right now. You just got to see yourself as Bitcoin as well. Invest in yourself yep. because at the end of the day, your business is what you're doing and you know the mechanics of it. Whereas Bitcoin, you may know a little less, but people are still investing in it anyway. So you've got to believe in your business and the idea mm -hmm. and you've got to see it as an investment. The same goes with your time as well. The more you invest in it, the more you're bound to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. hundred percent. Absolutely. We all get stressed, people. We it does get to us from time to time, but to stay positive and keep moving. Cool. So good, good, good. Um, closing point with that. Um, again, um, I'm glad you guys been um, listening to what we've been saying so far. Um, do hope you start your journey. And the last final stage is just to stay consistent. And this is where I'm going to give it to Wayne for here. No, this is where I'm going to steal the mic. <laughs> That's what I really do. So, so yeah, my chair back now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you don't. They, they, they can't see at the moment. They can only see the slides. So, it's okay. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it is about being consistent, and um, the importance of that is because when it comes to using your business, especially when it comes to online, what you got to remember is people are addicted to consistency and new stuff coming out all the time. People that have got like frequent posts online on their timeline, going live, that kind of stuff, showing their new work, the new developments. That's the kind of thing that keeps people engaged. I mean, my son, he's constantly on Snapchat. You know, he's always keeping up with all the artists that he likes following and what have you. So it just goes to show that consistency is attractive because it kind of lets people know, you know, this is what's popping. This is what's going on. It's the same as like if you go out maybe on a weekend or something, you're going to be more inclined to want to go to like the party or the club that's got like a queue outside because you're like, OK, what's so special about this place? The same as like a restaurant, you know, if it's really busy, okay, I want to know why people are so interested in that. So when you've got a consistent flow going like that, it attracts more people because it just grows more popular. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Definitely. Now, this part is um, more about being consistent, but it's about structure. So I'll just read that out. Staying consistent stabilizes the structure of your vision, no matter how hard it gets. Now, the more consistent you are, you start realizing what you need to stick to in order to keep up your consistency and, you know, just keeping it stable. So, for example, if you know that you've got a restaurant, for example, and there's a particular item in there or there's a particular dish that people keep buying and they want to come to all the time, it makes sense to be consistent with that the most or at least have that in high stock because that's what people are coming with. The minute you start going down that road, you're going to start realizing, OK, to make sure that I keep having this product for my customers, I'm going to make sure that I've got to have all the other things that supplement it. And then before you know it, you've almost got like, you know, you've got the backbone of your business because the thing that's really the main seller that draws people in, you keep that going and then you just keep everything else flowing with it. That's why you've got these stones here. They're kind of like lopsided all the way, but, you know, they're kind of consistently keeping equilibrium and balance sure, yeah. on top of each other. Mm -hmm. Because you know it's got the balance there, I love that. so that's my analogy to that one. So, um, how do you stay on top? I won't use that rock analogy that we just saw before, <laughs> but um, always remind yourself why you started business or why you started your business, and um, set up a structured plan yearly to daily. You know, use what motivates you to defeat complacency, and talk to someone that has the best interest for you. Now, pretty much every phrase in there is as important as the last. I personally have a plan that I do daily, weekly, monthly and yearly, um, even down to decades. Like I've got like I've got it laid down where I want to be and what I want to be doing and how I'm going to get there. And I kind of review that on a weekly basis, you know, so that's how you kind of just stay on top of things. So you don't end up submerging into like obscurity. And, you know, reminding yourself as well why you started the business. Don't forget, it's like your origins. Um, now, what motivates you? That could be anything. But that's what you've got to use to defeat your complacency. So, for example, if you know that 
right, you know what, I want to buy a house in Ghana in five years. That's what you should use to remind yourself why you're doing this and to go hard at it and not to stop. Because, you know, you, you remember that, okay, I want this house. I want that car. Or, you know, I want to go with this place. I want this for my children, X, Y, Z. You know, these are the kind of things that will just kind of keep you on track. Now, talking to someone that has the best interest for you, that means talking to someone that really wants you to have these things as well because they're going to encourage you. Whereas if you've got friends that may not necessarily feel the same way as you, they might try and stir you the other way. They might be like, oh, why do you want to go to Ghana for? Why do you want to live in that country? Why do you want a house? Why don't you stay here and do this? And X, Y, Z, you know, like there was a talk that um, one of my animator, um, one of the people that I'm a, fa I'm a fan of his work, he's called LaShawn Thomas. And he lived in Korea for some years. And what some of his friends were saying to him is, you want to live in Korea to do animation? And one of the things he said that really made me laugh, and Jesse's going to laugh at this, they said, but what would you do there? Do they, do they have McDonald's in Korea? Yeah. As if to say that's a reason not to go. Those are the kind of friends that you just don't keep around you because they're the kind of people that's going to like drag you in a completely different direction. And before you know it, years are going to go by and you're going to be thinking, wow, like, what have I done with my life all this time? I'm not even where I want to be. And all the people that's telling you to go the other way, they're doing what they want to do. And where are you? So, you know, you've got to keep people that want the best for you, but they've also got some form of interest in what you do. 100%. 100%. Definitely, man. Definitely. So, now, this is going to come up to one of the, well, my favourite part, which is um, for the live Q&A. We're going to be going live on Instagram and Facebook in about 10 minutes. So, you know, you can follow us there and, you know, you can, you know, interact with us, talk with us more directly. Any questions that you've got, you know, you can ask us. So, you know, just find us on Instagram or Facebook and just type in New Motive WOC and you'll find us there. So we hope to see you all there and, you know, give it about 10 minutes and that's where we're going to be. Yeah, so I'm just going to literally, let me just before you go, um, say thank you very much for watching this webinar. It is not over. Like Wayne said, we have got a Q&A live in about 10 minutes' time on Facebook and Instagram. Um, let me just unshare my screen so you guys could uh, see us. Right. Can you see us then? I think they can see us. They yeah. can see us. Uh, you sure? Is that you? Is that Sol? Is that Wayne? Okay. <laughs> I'm Wayne. I'm the guy that's been interrupting with the humour. That's mm -hmm. my role. I'm the yeah. humorous one. Jess is more the serious one. And oh. I'm the super one. No, he's not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's not the serious one. I'm just Don't saying that. <laughs> no. But yeah, um, it was nice to really, really spend this hour on the 29th of December presenting to you guys value and good health in how you can become a new owner for the new year and also um i did it we did make sure we did it on the 29th just before new year's eve because we want you guys to really get that plugged in your head so are you out at the raves we out of the barbecues the parties whatever's going on wherever you are in the world celebrating the new year that you've already made your plan to start off becoming a new owner for 2018 so you're not celebrating it doing the same thing you did last year in 2017, bringing in 2017's values, 2017's goals. It's not going to work. So like Wayne said, in 10 minutes' time, we're going to be on live on Instagram and Facebook, along with our special guests as well, um, answering your questions, your comments, your queries on our webinar that we just presented. And also, if you just have any questions in general about how you want to get started, so you've been stuck, you ain't got the right money, or you're at a job right now and you need help on how you can use that job to give you these tools and values into what you want to do, come see us. Facebook, Instagram, at newmotivewlc.com. Well, that's our website, but at newmotivewlc. Anyway, catch you guys in a minute. Thank you very much. Um, we shall see us soon. Ten minutes. See you in ten minutes, guys. Ten minutes, guys.